Welcome to Looking Within, a podcast to help you quiet your mind, settle your body, and see God's presence in your everyday life. I'm Julie. I hope our time together will help you to feel more grounded, whole, and filled with a growing desire to be a conduit of God's love and presence to the world around you. Now, let's begin. The Christmas season has begun. In addition, for the Christian Church, the season of Advent has begun. The four weeks leading up to Christmas, when Christians prepare for the celebration of the birth of Christ. Typically, these next four weeks are a joyful time of year, with a little busyness and stress mixed in as we attend extra activities and take on tasks to help make the holidays merry. But this year, everything is different, isn't it? This year, we'll move through the coming weeks under the shadow of COVID-19. Our travel plans, family gatherings, worship services, work parties, holiday concerts, festive parades, shopping habits, literally everything about this Christmas season will need to be altered or canceled. And as if all of this isn't enough, we've also been watching friends, family, our nation, and the entire world struggle against a global pandemic. Perhaps you've had COVID yourself or have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. All told, it's been a year of great suffering, uncertainty, anxiety, and fear. And I wonder, how do we resolve the contradiction of the suffering and struggle of the pandemic and the celebration of Christmas? How do we celebrate Christmas in a COVID world? I'd like to spend these four weeks of Advent looking at this together. Spiritual director and retired pastor Charles Ortloff will be my guest as we examine how we can still celebrate Christmas in a COVID world. We'll use the four candles and accompanying words of the Advent wreath to help us, as they point us to the hope, joy, peace, and love that Christ's birth and constant presence bring into the world. And Charles will also be considering stories from others' lives that will help us. Thanks, Julie, for the opportunity to walk together this Advent in such a challenging time. I look forward to telling the stories of people like you and me who faced great suffering. They neither gave in to despair nor closed their eyes to the suffering. They showed us a third way, holding on to the contradiction of suffering and celebration. They walked through it to the other side. There the contradiction was dissolved, and God was waiting for them. The Advent journey is a wonderful time to look within, a time to bring our uncertainties and fears, our contradictions about life to the surface, and wait for God to show up, bringing us into our Christmas celebration. I so look forward to this four-week journey, Charles. We probably need more preparation for Christmas than ever, and the weeks of Advent will help us with that. As Christ comes into the world and into our lives, he brings what we celebrate in the Advent wreath candles, hope, joy, peace, and love. But in the midst of our COVID world, there will be contradictions that we'll sense, as the suffering during a global pandemic doesn't naturally lend itself to hope, joy, peace, and love. So today, this week, we begin our Advent journey by holding on to the question, where is our hope this Christmas? As we think of those who have gone before us, we realize that we have been here before. I think of World War II, the global suffering and the hopelessness so many experienced. We can tell many stories of hopelessness and hear from people who wondered, where is God in such suffering? Probably nowhere is this hopelessness more clearly seen 
than in the stories of those who were taken to die in the Nazi death camps, over six million Jews, and other people labeled undesirable were sent to their deaths, non-combatants, innocent men, women, and children. We are familiar with a young Dutch girl, Anne Frank, who was one of those taken. She left her diary, a compilation of her hopes and fears, the contradictions of great suffering in the heart of this young woman. There is another young Dutch woman, maybe less known to us, Eddie Hillesum. She wrote a diary and also died in the death camps in 1943. In her diary, Eddie loved to comment on the beautiful flowers just outside the barbed wire fences of her prison. She contrasted the suffering inside the prison walls with the beauty of the flowers outside the walls. She didn't dismiss her suffering, pretending that it wasn't there, but she held on to the beauty and the suffering. She wrote that she hoped that there would come a day when the nightmare of killing would be ended, and that she hoped she would see that day. She wanted to be the one who would remind people of the suffering. The world needed to hold on to the contradiction of beauty and suffering, just as she had. And in holding that contradiction, she believed a new wisdom would come to all people. Eddie did not get that opportunity, but she speaks to us today to hold the beauty and the suffering in our world, the hopelessness and the hopefulness. This is the third option for us this Christmas. Rather than falling into deep despair or becoming a nation of Pollyannas, pretending the suffering is not there, she calls out to us to hold them both. This can only happen in contemplation, when we are fully and prayerfully present to what is, what really is. And in holding on to both, we are cracked open. We let go of our definitions of hope. Life is not about us, our little hopes and dreams and wants. And in letting go of ourselves, we are made ready for God's hope of the world, Christ Jesus. God never promised to give us all of our hopes and dreams. God promised only Emmanuel, God with us. And if God is for us, we have nothing to fear, but rather we have all hope. Hope for tomorrow, hope for today. That is the journey for us this Advent, to find hope in the midst of hopelessness, to experience this wisdom ourselves, a wisdom that the mind cannot comprehend, but the soul embraces as true a wisdom that leads us to our Christmas celebration of hope, even in a global pandemic. This is the clear message that Eddie speaks to us this Advent season. Charles, the story of Eddie Hillesum is so powerful. We can become so overwhelmed with our own struggles and the struggles of the world that we forget we can look to others who have gone before us who have lived through difficult and life-altering circumstances and events. These teachers, both past and present, have much to say to us. As we sit in the quiet for some reflection today, let's think about that third option that Eddie holds out to us, the holding of both the beauty and the suffering of life, all at the same time. In this quiet space and time, I'd invite you to gently close your eyes and to take a few deep breaths in and out, in and out. Hear the sound of the bowl calling you to look within. Let it center you. Let it awaken you to God's presence. Eddie invites us to hold the contradiction of this Christmas. What is the hopefulness 
And what is the hopelessness that you experience? Can you hold them together, not resolving that tension? Can you be still and know God in that contradiction? We'll be back with you in about two minutes. one more minute to notice what's happened in your heart while you were in the quiet. What insight or intention will you carry forward? And by just being with God, resting in God's loving presence, and letting God enjoy your presence. I'd invite you now to take a few deep breaths in and out, in and out. Hear the bowl sound calling you back to this day. Gently open your eyes, remaining still for a moment longer. This week, we invite you to consider the third option for us this Christmas as seen in the life of Eddie Hillisum. Hold the contradictions of your life, the suffering and the beauty, the hope and the hopelessness. This goes beyond the comprehension of our minds, but it's well within the grasp of our souls. 
And as our hearts are cracked open by holding this contradiction, we let go of our hopes and dreams and are made ready to receive the real hope of Christmas. Emmanuel, God is with us, no matter what. On Wednesday and Friday of this week, we take another look at holding on to this third option of hopelessness and hopefulness. In a bonus episode on Wednesday, we see how this theme shows up in the story of Jesus' birth. And in a bonus episode on Friday, we'll talk about how this theme shows up in our own lives. During these four weeks of Advent, through 12 Looking Within episodes, join us as often as you can as we explore four different contradictions, seeing them not as problems, but opportunities to more richly celebrate Christmas in a COVID world. Thank you for making time for your inner self today, for developing and enriching your relationship with God through reflection and discovery. Whatever you've experienced, carry that with you in the coming days. You can find more episodes at our website, gloria-day, that's D-E-I, dot com, slash looking within podcast or subscribe through your favorite podcast app. If you know someone who might enjoy and benefit from this podcast, share it with them. Your financial contributions make this ministry possible. To give, visit gloria-day.com slash giving. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time 